Hey guys, it's Matthew. I want to thank those of you that tuned into the live stream last week. I realized there were some technical issues that made it not really a successful event, but still I appreciate those of you that tried. In the future, maybe we can get it dialed in a little bit better and have a bit more success. But right now we need to address the DWC system that we built on that live stream because there's some leaks and some other issues that I want to take care of now and this is a good opportunity to do it. So why don't you hang in there and we'll get started right away. Behind me is the grow tent we built together on the live stream. That went pretty well. What didn't go well was the DWC system itself. There's leaks and we can't have leaks so looking at the fittings I used I decided let's scrap that. We're going to try some uni seals which are rated a little bit better, cost a little bit more, but hopefully will leave us without any leaks. Behind me is one of the old buckets I used with the old seals that I modified to take a uni seal. And right now I have some water inside here and it's holding and it's not leaking around any of the seals. So I'm going to go ahead and modify the other three buckets to take the uni seal. It's a, it's a bigger fitting so I have to drill the hole a little bit bigger with a hole saw. Um, and there's a way to do that that I kind of figured out. It's a little tricky, but it works. So I'm going to modify those buckets and put the uni seals in all those. Here's a look at what I was using versus the uni seal. And the uni seal is obviously a bit bigger, uh, thicker rubber. Overall, it just seems like a better product. Cheaper is not always better. I never learned that lesson, but here we are replacing the old with the new. I should mention that before you go out to the hardware store and start buying a bunch of fittings and pipe for your UniSeal, to check out the website because on their website they'll tell you what size OD pipe will fit on what fitting as well as what size hole saw to use when drilling your holes. There's also some useful information on there on how to prep your piping for when you're putting it into the UniSeal. There's tips about beveling the edge of the pipe as well as not to use any kind of lubricant when putting the pipe in. Now that I've upgraded the buckets behind me to accept the uni seal, we can start plumbing things together. Because I'm restricted to the size of the grow tent and where the inputs come in, I'm going to have to make my fittings work in a way that works with the tent. So I'm just going to put my fittings on the floor and do a rough kind of mock-up of how I want things to go. So with the plumbing complete, the next thing to do would be check for leaks. I had to raise up the uh, buckets a little bit. Um, so they're sitting on a platform now, and that's just so that the plumbing can go out one of the access holes and it'd be a little bit easier. Uh, with this system, I plan to regulate the height of the water with uh, an external uh, reservoir. And I'm planning to use a float valve to kind of set the height of the water. Um, and with that float valve, I'll also be able to just top up the reservoir so that everything is always staying at a constant level. So why don't we add some water to this thing and just check for leaks. So things are looking alright so far. Uh, the only leaks I'm really seeing are coming from some of the connections and not the uni seals. And that's all right because I haven't glued anything yet. I was hoping not to have to, and maybe I still won't. Maybe I can get away with putting some Teflon tape on some of these connections, and that might just be enough because these, this, this system isn't under pressure at all. So we might be able to get away with that. If it does end up having to glue the odd connection here or there or all of them, that should be all right too. What's really important is that the uni seals aren't leaking, and it appears to be holding water. This is a 3x3 three three grow tent, and really... You know, you could probably, it'd be big enough for just one plant or one DWC bucket. The reason I'm doing it this way is I just want to 
play around with making an expandable system that you could add to or potentially add to. So that's why I'm doing it this way. I don't expect to have uh, in a 3x3 three three space you know, four tomato plants growing that big in, in such a confined space. Or if you did have four of them, they probably, you'd probably keep them restricted to a, a fairly small size. But for this, I'm happy with how it's looking so far. The next thing to do would be to add some air stones in each bucket. And that's the next thing on the list. I just have one more air stone to put in and we're ready to hook it up to the air pump and see what we got. So with the air pump installed and all the lines run for that, I mentioned before that I wanted to do an auto top up on the uh, bucket here that's going to control the level of the DWC buckets. And to do that I will use this uh, float valve and that will allow me to set the height of the water I want in my DWC system. So I'm going to open this up, get that installed and we should be just about ready to go. So with the basics of our DWC system done, we're just about ready for plants in it. There's a few other changes I might make in the near future, but it's time to get some seedlings going so we have something to actually grow in there. Uh, the other thing that I need to do is nutrients. And what I'm going to be using for nutrients is something called nuclear juice. And it's supposed to be uh, just an easy grow for DWC systems, which is what we have. So we have the opportunity to test this out. I found this nuclear juice on YouTube. It's from a fellow YouTuber. Uh, his name is Cody, and he runs a web page called uh, Nukeheads. And I came across this, this channel just surfing through YouTube. I got caught into something that I thought was a little clickbaity. Uh, I clicked into it, watched it kind of got me interested and I was like, is this guy for real? And I watched a few more and I was like, okay, this is actually quite interesting. If you look at some of his videos, he does some real cool stuff, uh, like with Arduinos and microcontrollers and he shows you how to set something up to do like an automated home grow system, which is really cool and he starts it right from the ground up. Real basic so that anybody could understand it. Some of his other stuff that I found interesting was he goes in and rescues these grows that, uh, other people have started. Looks like bigger companies because there's a lot of plants in there and, and some of these are just you would think are beyond saving because they're just infested with spider mites and all kinds of things but sure enough like a couple months later after he's in there things kind of get cleaned up a bit and they're actually able to salvage uh, some of their crops. So it's just it's an interesting channel. He's putting out a lot of content and I would suggest you check it out. The other thing that's really cool about it is lots of free giveaways lots and good stuff too. Every week he's giving away brand name LED grow lights, lots of other stuff too. So check it out. It's super easy. There's no catch. You just have to subscribe to his channel. That's it. And you can be, like the odds of winning I'm sure are pretty good compared to a lot of other contests out there because a lot of people don't know about it yet. But check it out. Uh, so yeah, we're going to look forward to doing some new content in the future. Hopefully testing out a few other products. Uh, I'm excited to to try some of the stuff that Nukeheads has provided me. 
and I recommend you go check them out. So thanks for watching this episode, and we'll catch you on the next one.